Hello, I'm Pastor Vicki and Pastor Esther. We're here on Kingdom Talk Ministries and we just want to thank everybody that's watching. We appreciate you coming on and watching us. We ask that you like and share so that somebody else can watch the broadcast later on. Um, we're just so grateful that we can be on again tonight. You yeah. know, I know that God has something really good, really good. Amen. Because I was like, looking at this word and I'm thinking, oh my God, because you know, the word isn't just for everybody. The word always hits home first. Yes. And so it's like, oh God, help me read this because uh, you can't just read it and not know that you're going to have to walk it out. And you know, pastor says that walk it out. Trust yeah. me, you're having to walk out what you're, what you're reading. Amen. And I was thinking, God, how could I read this and not see that I'm talking about me? Amen. And so, you know, I know that tonight, um, it's going to be something good because it, it hurt it, very much. It really hurt. You know, the yeah. Bible talks about the double edged sword and I'm like, Lord Jesus, because this was something that came in and I could just feel God say, you know what? This is what we need to deal with. This is and like the cutting away. Yeah. And I was thinking, um, and you know, like he's cutting away and you're thinking, oh no, let me hold this. Yeah. Let me, I'm used to this. I'm comfortable with this. So I really believe tonight we're going to see God, um, come through for you because I know he came through for me Amen. through this word. So, um, if pastor, if you can just pray yeah. for tonight, for those that are watching. Definitely. In the name of the father, son, and the Holy spirit, Lord, we just thank, thank you, you for what you're going to do tonight. We thank you for your word yes, that Jesus. is alive and yes. is active. Mm -hmm. We thank you for those that are watching, for those that are going to watch. Yes. We thank you for just everything that you are doing in mm -hmm. our lives today, Lord God Almighty. I ask that you speak tonight, Lord God Almighty, that mm -hmm. you open our eyes so that we can see, our ears yes, so that we can God. hear, Lord God, and that we know who we are, Lord God. When this word, mm -hmm. as, we, as we're studying back and forth, Lord God Almighty, that it's for us mm -hmm. and we see us, Lord yes. God. Yeah. And if we say, this is good for someone else, that you, you correct us and say, it's good for you. Mm -hmm. I thank you for everything that you're doing, for everything every blessing that you have. Yes. I ask that you forgive us, Lord God Almighty, that you forgive us of all carnality and that this yes, be your God. word. It yes. be your word, not my opinion, mm -hmm. Lord God Almighty, but words that come off of your pages. Mm -hmm. I thank you for what you're going to do. In your holy name we say, amen. 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 Like Again, thank you all for watching and just like and share so that uh, even if somebody misses the broadcast, they can come back on yeah. your timeline and watch it. But, um, you know, I'm excited to have Pastor Esther back from uh, New Jerusalem Church in Defiance. You know, it, it's good to have people of God that can come beside you, that can run with you, that yeah. can can help undergird you. And, you know, like it, it's very um, it's it's very needed in the body of Christ that you have somebody that you can be transparent with. And you, whether you're a minister of the gospel, whether yeah. you're a church goer, whatever, you have to have somebody in your life that you can say, you know what, like today I'm having a bad day or, <clears throat> you know, or pastor, how are you? you know? And I always text pastor in the morning. And I was like, uh, good morning, pastor. How are you doing? Because, you know, like I, I don't want to always be about me, you know, Amen. and I'm hoping she'll say, oh, these cows are giving me a... <laughs> <laughs> These cows are bothering me, Amen. but you know, so you know, you have to have that person or anybody in your life that can, that you can, you know, be real with, because if you're not real, then you hide things. Yes. And then if you're not transparent, then when things in your life come up, you, you don't want to deal with them nope. because you have nobody to talk to. And the Bible talks about that though. It talks yeah. about, you know, us confessing our sin to one another. Yes. And you know, that is a hard thing to say. Because sometimes we don't want to confess our sins. No, and confessing, I'm glad that you brought that up because with the the, the study of the kings, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying mm -hmm. to learn about captivity. Yeah. And yeah. that when Jesus came, he said, I came to set the captives free, mm -hmm. but he came for his people initially. And they yeah. said, we're not in captivity. They didn't even know it. And they were being <laughs> captive by the Romans at right. that time. They didn't even know you it. You know, and he, he, he was speaking to them, and, and that's what he's doing to us. Right. And we need to start looking at at, conf at talking about what we've done wrong, where mm -hmm. we stumble, where we need help. Um, I need you to pray for me. I'm dealing with, with anger. I'm dealing with mm -hmm. just certain different things. We need to really start looking at that as a gift. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it, it, it removes this this 
these bondages from us, this burden that we're we're hiding, um, and we don't need to hide anymore. We've been set free. Right. We've right. been set free, and and we think when when we think of confession or we think of telling one another, I need help in this area. The word says this, but my life is showing this fruit. Mm-hmm. We 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 have shame. Yeah. We right. have embarrassment. Right. We want to run. We want to hide, like Uzziah from last week, mm-hmm. and God. <laughs> It's a gift that God gave us. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm allowing you to repent. Take the gift. Take the win. Yeah. Accept it. Repent and be free of what was holding you bondage. He says repent. Like, don't do it again. But And that's the only restriction. Can you imagine? He's not even giving you a restriction of, okay, read your Bible 20 times a day. or you know, That'd be great. I like rules. (laughs) 20 times a day. Like, check, done. You know, but he's not giving us those no. kind of rules, you know, and, and he's just saying, you know, repent, just turn from it, turn from it, turn from it. And, and, and the freedom you get from turning from it. Come on. Amen. We don't want to, some of these things like I've seen in my life and how many of us, um, including myself, have we made a mistake? And in that mistake, right in the middle of that mistake, we're like, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. What am I doing yeah. here? Or in the middle like of a clarity phone call. comes, yes, right in the middle of something. Yeah. And God's like, "You don't have to stay there. Mm-hmm. Turn mm-hmm. around. Yeah, leave. Yeah, make a U-turn. Mm-hmm. I give you that freedom. This is not a dead end. Turn mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. Accept the gift of repentance. Right. I consider it a gift. It really. Amen. I think that's Amen. why I'm so transparent because it's it's freedom. And then when mm-hmm. people call me out on things. Mostly your kids, my kids call mm-hmm. me out quite a bit. But um, uh, yeah, I have, it, I have those two in my house, <laughs> right? It, but it's like okay, it's something I have to after like yeah. the seconds of being upset. But okay, yeah, that's something I have to deal with because right. why won't I? Why does it upset me when they come tell you? Yeah, because Mark will come in and he's like, "Did you read your Bible? Did you pray? Have you listened to worship music?" And I'm like, "Did you?" Are you? Yeah, that's right. Well, what? Why are you? Why are you coming at me? I'm yeah. your mom. You you don't come talk to me. But in reality, you know, sometimes it's like the Holy Spirit yes. wants to quicken us, and and He'll use those around you to to quicken you. And it's like the ones that He uses are the ones that He knows you're going to listen to. Yeah, that you're going to trust because I'm going to trust my sons when they come Amen. tell me something. Amen. You know, if somebody else that come tells me, I'll be like, mm, I don't know. But if it's your own children that see you every single day and they're in the same house with you. They and know they're something's coming. missing. Right. They they know. I they're, mean, like Mark will come home and say, okay, what's going on? And I'm going to use Mark because Mark is like, Mark's the, the here, yeah. you know, like the, <laughs> and um, he's like, well, what's going on? You know, I came home from work and there's like, like I could feel the tension and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. and, and you know, it's like, he's on it. Yeah. He's on it. And I'm like, well, and he's like, y'all just need to deal with it. And you know, <laughs> and it's that, That's it's awesome. that, you know, that. That in him, you know, just deal with it. Yeah. Figure out what you need to do yes. and take care of it. And because, you know, this, your home is supposed to be a place of peace, joy, love, and communication. Safety. Mm-hmm. Safety. Anything that you that you need should be in your home. Yeah. And if it's not like that, you know, the, our kids will know and they'll come tell us. Yeah. And we're like, well, I don't want to hear it. But no. it's really, it's the Holy Spirit. It is. Saying, look, you're not going to listen to me tell you inside you. Then let me tell you through somebody you're going to trust. Right. And it's <laughs> such an awesome thing. If you if you take this away with you or hide it or just tell yourself repentance, dealing with the ugly truth of things, that truly is a gift. Mm-hmm. At least you know where you're at. Yeah. At least right. you know where you're at. And you no longer have to hold that burden. Mm-hmm. God holds it for mm-hmm. you. And that is so much freedom. We sit at NJC on a Wednesday and we do a lot of Bible studying scripture by scripture. And um, we'll be like, he says that we have to, we're the only debt that we owe one another is love. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were all like, oh, we don't really like that one. Mm-hmm. I would rather owe you $50. Right. Um, <laughs> then, uh, I would rather you owe me $50. Too, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but we, we do, <clears throat> we tell the truth. Like we yeah. hear what he's yeah. saying. I read what he's saying. It makes sense for what he's saying because the consequences are others will bear the burden of me not loving someone um and it looks like something i want to do it just really hurts to do it and the truth of the matter is i haven't been doing it Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I didn't notice that before. Yeah. God, please help us. And everybody's raising their hand. We haven't done it before. We're not indebted to each other by love. We think by good works we can do this. Right. Yeah. Thank you for bringing this out. How can we be better? Mm-hmm. So um, it's really, really a gift that we should we should really start utilizing mm-hmm. more. Um, and you start feeling freedom. So you're not looking and waiting for the enemy to come and take you. The enemy mm-hmm. wants you to hide in that cave yeah. because he wants to call you out Yeah. on his time. Yeah. Right. And so he's like, if they don't repent, if they don't use that gift that Christ has given them, then right when they're going to do something, I'm going to come and collect that debt. Mm, that's good. And they will have to pay me back. Mm-hmm. And so if we repent, there's nothing he can hold you on. Everybody yes. already knows the truth. Right. The right. truth is out there. The light, God himself, will heal us from mm-hmm. that truth. And Uzziah could have done that. We studied that last mm-hmm. week. He could have done that. Yeah, he could have right. stood up when mm-hmm. the priest had told him, and he could have said, whoa, I, I, you know what? I don't know what I, overtook yeah, me. I don't know like, what this was. It helped me. How this happened. Forgive. Right? Right. God, forgive me. Mm-hmm. God, forgive me. And then tell the priest, you know, I'm sorry I disrespected God's house. Yeah. You know, um, but he didn't. Instead, he went and hid mm-hmm. in his house. His pride made him hide. Yeah. It's craziness. And today we're going to talk about his son mm-hmm. and what he did. Um, because, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh. Oh. But before we get there, because we want to talk about these kings <laughs> oh. Oh. Jesus. so that we can learn from them. Right. And, and if we're honest with each other, which we were, I think, last week, mm-hmm. I mean, very transparent, but there's a lot of Uzziah in, in us. Oh, yeah. Right. And we're going to talk about that with Isaiah today um, through Jotham. But mm-hmm. we have to learn to be transparent We ha- mm-hmm. with ourselves. Now, we're very good at being transparent about other people. Hello. Let's call out their sin, yeah. like, right away. Yeah. We think, like, That's it's a, just talking a about prophetic today, gift. Right? Yeah, like, oh, God told me. No, God did not tell you. It's posted on social <laughs> media. That's yeah, how you just know. Read, just read yeah, just read Facebook, it. You'll know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so we want to see these kings. Mm-hmm. We don't want to judge them in a way of condemnation, but we want to see what they've done. Mm-hmm. And like God says, we want to learn from right. them. Well, it's like even in the natural, um, like, When we went to war, you know, like the wars that we have now, they look at Vietnam and think, you know what? We're not going to do that again. Amen. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like that. Because they don't want to fall in the same trap they did in Vietnam and lose all those people. No. And so what we want to do is we want to learn from these kings because we don't want to fall in the same trap that the enemy used back in that time period. We don't want to fall into that. We want to. We want to. Because now we have Jesus. Yes. So now we have the right answer. They had the word. Don't. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is now we have Jesus, the one that comes in and brings the covenant with him, that comes in and gives us, transfers over everything to us. Right. But now we have to make sure we don't fall back like these kings did, because then when we fall back, then the war is already, we lost the war. Yes. Yes. We lost the war. Mm-hmm. So we don't we're just just like that. We don't want to go back in and do the same thing that they did because we want to live a different life. We don't want to live like that. No. I mean, I don't. I was reading and going, oh, Jesus, help me. No. Help me because I don't want to fall the same way that he did. No. With pride, with with arrogance. You know, oh, I can always, you know what? I serve God and whatever I do because I serve God, everything's going to be perfect. I'm going to have everything that I need. No. When in reality, no, it doesn't work like that. No. No, actually, it's opposite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Amen. Hebrews, we can start off with Hebrews uh, 12, 1 through 2. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, therefore, we also. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every Every weight. weight. That would be sin. Every weight and sin which easily ensnares us. So let's lay it aside. Mm -hmm. Let's put it away. Let's learn from these kings and see what we have to do. And God's like, I'm not asking you to pay the consequence for that. I'm asking you to just lay it aside. Mm -hmm. Lay aside every weight and sin which easily ensnares us. How did you get caught? How did you get trapped? Because God, the word in Hebrews says, it easily ensnares us. Yeah. It easily, conflict easily makes us Mm -hmm. angry at one another. But God does not want that for us. Mm -hmm. So he's 
like lay it aside. And as Roman says, which is very hard for me, he's like, only <laughs> owe love. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Only love them. That's what you owe them. He's like, don't love them because you're good. You owe it. Mm -hmm. You're in debt to love. Yeah. It says, and then run, run with endurance, the race that is set before you looking onto Jesus. This Amen. is really, really big. As we get into this Bible study, you're going to know that that's right there. Mm -hmm. If you write it down, <laughs> tag Sorry. it, write it, do whatever, highlight it, highlight it. But it says looking nope. unto mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. look to me. Mm -hmm. Don't right. look to Pastor Pete. Nope. nope. Look to Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. When we look at me, when we look at Pastor Pete, when you look at Uzziah, when you look at Jotham as we're going to, when we mm -hmm. look at Isaiah as we're going to, yeah. we're going to look at how a sinner got redeemed, Amen. not how a sinner saved right. somebody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's good. Because we can't save anybody. Sure can't. And when we think that we can, mm -hmm. you're, you're putting that crown of pride, pride. on. There you go. And what we're saying, I too yeah. am like God. And the last person to say that <laughs> was Satan himself. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> he said, I too am like God. Mm -hmm. I will rise like him. Yep. And that's what we're saying when fell. we say. And he fell. And he, he fell. got thrown out he of got, the kingdom. <laughs> he got tossed yes. out. Yes. And it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of, of our, our faith. faith. Yep. It is not me who's the author and finisher. Nope. It is not Pastor Pete. It is not your local pastor. It is not. Yep. It is Jesus who is Amen. the author and finisher. We are to help one another. Yeah. Yeah. We too are sheep. Yeah. Being led by the great yeah. shepherd. Amen. Be the great shepherd mm -hmm. who for the joy set before him. Right. It was joy. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about this. Everybody, just think about this. The joy set before Jesus Christ himself to walk to Gethsemane, knowing that they weren't going to wait with him. Mm -hmm. He told them, I need you. Yeah. The joy to be betrayed. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. The joy to hang on a cross. The joy that the crown mm -hmm. of thorns and the blood that fell. It says blood fell from his mm -hmm. head. And I believe that that blood is what healed yeah. Yeah. the land yeah. when it landed. landed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The joy set before him endured. How many of us do that? Or do we tap out? Mm -hmm. Come on. My yeah. feelings are hurt. Yeah. They weren't there for me. <laughs> you didn't shake I, my hand, Pastor. You didn't shake my hand. I'm, I'm the one of the 99. No, Jesus is the one. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He came. Mm -hmm. He was the one that left everything for the lost sheep. Mm -hmm. I can't save you. Mm -mm. Only he can. Yep. Amen. He, Amen. Despising the shame. He knew the shame he was going to have to go through. He despised the shame, yet mm -hmm. he did it. And he sat down. He didn't stand up. Mm -mm. And when you sit down, that means you're done. You're done. It's over. Yeah. Sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. That's, That's the good. God that we serve. That's good. And those are the cloud of witnesses. So they've done it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, um, people will say, well, you don't understand what I'm going through. Well, somebody, <laughs> someone in Hebrews 12 does. Amen. And they endured and they stood. Right, right. And, you know, it, I always think about that where it said that I, I'm his joy. He endured for me. For you. For me. I'm his joy. Individually. Right. And he he's seen it. He's seen me before I was even born. He knew because he he's Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's got they're all knowing. And he's thinking, you know what? That person right there, Pastor Vicky, even through all her her junk, even through everything that she's been through, all her walk of life, it, even being hurt, being betrayed, being belittled, being whatever, being talked about, being stabbed in the back, whatever. I still did it for her. Right. Knowing. Not, not what she's going to do right mm -mm. then at that moment that she's going through that turmoil, but looking at the prize, looking at her life being changed and transformed, serving me 
all the rest of her life. No matter how hard it is, no matter how tired she is, no matter what she's going through, serving me, worshiping me, loving me, looking for me. That's that's the hope. The joy saying, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to be I'm going to be ridiculed. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do whatever I have to do for her. Right. Knowing that there will be days that we deny him. Knowing oh that there will be moments that we say, are we on the we right miss path? It. We miss Knowing it. Knowing that we'll be, there will be days that we say, is this word even true? Are you even Knowing. God? Are you even God? Mm -hmm. Going to him in the midst of the darkest time of your life saying, you know what? I don't even want to trust you anymore. No. I don't even want. You know, I was like, God, you know what? If you're really real, then you have to show me. And I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I, I cannot. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to put everything aside. I'm done. And and the moment that I thought that, that I even wanted to do that, <laughs> I get up the next day and I'm like, what in the world am I thinking? Amen. How could I even go to that place when he endured the cross for me? Yes. To bring his father glory. He, he loves the father that much. Right. Right. That he... Oh my God. And I, and I sat there and I thought, Oh, like I, I was beating myself up for a little while. And God's like, why are you beating yourself up? I already knew what you were going to do. Right. Just get back up. Get back up. Just keep moving. Yeah. Don't slow down. Keep running. Yeah. And I'm like, Lord, you're just so faithful. Like he that's is. all I could tell him. Yeah. Like I couldn't even say, uh, like, I couldn't even say, Lord, I love, like, I just was like, God, you're just so faithful. Yeah. And like how many of us can really sit down and look at ourselves and just like, don't tell him anything else, but God, you're just so faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful. I look at my children and I think you're faithful. Amen. You look Amen. at, God, you look at your parents, my mom, and I think you're so faithful. Amen. My husband, I, you're so faithful. My, my family, my sister, mm -hmm. my, my nephews, my, my nieces. I, I have a, I don't even know what Ari is. I think she's my great niece. niece. Yeah, great my niece. nephew's daughter. Great, great niece. niece right? mm -hmm. I'm not that smart. I'm very visual. But, that's fine. but um, so yeah, but she's adorably awesome. And I don't know why I love her so much. I love her so much. It hurts me to see her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's insane. And I'm like, God, you are so good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You are just good. Yeah. You're just good. And last week we read about Uzziah and he reigned for 52 years. And we're going to go into this. This is really important to know because we put our eyes on people. Come on. Preach and when it. people fall, mm -hmm. you fall. Yeah, right. When people fall, you fall. Or when people fall, you stop. Yeah. And yeah. you question everything. Um, and that's what happened when my father passed. I, I, I stopped, not that I was serving God the right way. So, but, um, uh, just putting that out there, but, um, yeah. So, but you stop when something doesn't go your way, you stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here it says last week we read about Uzziah. He reigned 52 years and did great things, great things, mm -hmm. but the pride that lived in him internally, he never dealt with. So at the end, it came out. Mm -hmm. It can't stay hidden. Mm -hmm. When Zechariah was no longer with him, like we talked last week, when Sister Frances isn't around, what do I do? Uh oh, oh, watch out! Somebody she like knows I'm Jesus. You better not do nothing, girl. She has when, a direct line. I'm, to that's what we think. My dad used to be like, "Tell your mom not to pray for me." Um, <laughs> but pride comes in. Yeah. And pride is there. And pride mm -hmm. is there when we think we're humble. And pride is there all the time. And and if we don't expose that to the light, it doesn't mean that it's going to go away tomorrow, but expose it every single day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like uh, expose it every single day. And so Isaiah is growing up as a child. He's growing up as a child and he's seeing Uzziah. He's seen mm -hmm. Uzziah build these great buildings. Right. He's seen Uzziah build walls and tear down walls. He's seen Uzziah fight and win battles and, and just the agriculture is going wonderful. He's seen all these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's seen these wonderful, awesome things. What in his mind do you think he's saying? <laughs> when he saw Uzziah fall. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. I mean, you have to think about it. When we see great people. people yeah, come on. And then we see them fall. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Mm -hmm. Do we stop? 
When, when I have not met your needs, do you stop? Do you quit? Mm -hmm. Were you, do you no longer love the Lord? Is he no longer good all the time? Right. Well, where were your eyes? Where were your eyes looking? You know, we're going to talk about that. We're going to yeah. talk about that. For sure, we're going to get into idolatry and we're going to get into a lot of different deep things. So I just, man, I'm going to tell you right now, I would get a pen and paper if I were you guys, because we're going to give you some stuff that is going to help you in your walk. Because I know, like, even when I first got saved, how this minister of the gospel, he would preach and preach. And, and I would say, oh, my God, that's my spiritual papa. Because yeah. I would like. Yes. Like, you know, when I first got saved, I didn't know. And um, if y'all probably know him. It's Rod Parsley. He's like from this oh, area. Yeah. And I always said, when I get close enough to him, I'm going to go see him. I want to get in his church and I'm going to be a part of his ministry because that's what I seen. That's when I got saved. And I was like, and then, but then I was like, um, he went through this thing, not anything bad, but he went through this thing with his son and his wife and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, am I, do I really want to go and be a part of all that? Because he's getting hit and, you know, and so it, it started to change the way I thought about even being a Christian. I'm like, I don't know if I want to be a Christian. This guy goes, his son dies. They're taking him to the hospital and he, God doesn't bring him back to life. And his, he, he had this bad accident and he had throat cancer, like all this stuff going on. I'm like, well, do I really want to serve that God? And but reality, my eyes were on the man of God. Yes, and, and we're going to talk about on that. the, Lord, the himself. Lord himself. And that is a big problem. Our eyes are on the man, the men and women of God, That's but right. they're not on God. Right. And if right. they are, it's what the men and women of God have placed in your life or said in your life. Mm -hmm. You haven't studied the scripture. You haven't searched it out like right. hidden treasure. When we go, even my adult children, when we go to the beach, they are also digging out in the sand. Mm -hmm. They're digging mm -hmm. out in the sand. Are you digging into his word? That's I know right. it sounds right. really boring. Mm -hmm. Oh, NJC, all they do his word that's really boring how can god's word be boring right. right if you're if you're learning about somebody you love yeah if that's somebody you love i i mean like when we were in high school my husband would come over and i'm like i want to know everything about you when we we're dating i want to know everything about you tell me all about you what do you like what did what don't you like what color do you like what's your favorite food and we wouldn't we know these things about each other because we loved each other yeah. we wanted to make each other happy so okay well you like a snickers bar honey let me bring, look i <laughs> had a lot of snicker bars in my life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so he was, like, <laughs> he was like he was like here's a snickers bar you know like he'll go to the store and come back and bring me something because he knows because he knows that's the same way we should be with Jesus. We should we know. We should know everything about him because we just want to bring him something. Yes, because we love him. Because we love him. And because what, he loved him us first. We bring him us. Yes. We bring him us. Yes. So we talk about Jotham. He's in um, 2 Jotham. Chronicles 27. Jesus. 2 Chronicles uh, 27. So um, it says here, we'll start off with one. Jotham was 25 years old when he became king. And reign for 16 years in Jerusalem. Listen to this. Now, because we're also going to talk mostly about Isaiah. Um, and then we'll end on some high high places. Because we've got some high places to take down. And we're this is what this whole thing is about. Tonight. Is tearing down those high places. Right. But Jotham was 25 years old when he became king. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. His mother's name was Jerasha, daughter of Zadok. Sure, I'm saying those wrong. Please forgive me. He did what was right. Listen to this. Verse 2. This is really important because a lot of us... Highlight it. Yes, highlight it. Circle write it. it down. Okay, it says, Here He did go. what was right in the Lord's sight, just as his father Uzziah had done. In addition, he did not enter the Lord's sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Here it is. But the people still mm. behaved yep. corruptly. They were evil. So he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Number uh, Verse 3, Jotham <laughs> built the upper gate of the Lord's temple. He built extensive um, walls. He also built cities in the hill country of Judah and fortresses and towers in the forest. He waged wars against the king of the Ammonites. He overpowered the Ammonites, and every year they gave him money um, and bushels of barley. They paid him the second and third year. So Jotham strengthened his position because he did not waver. This is important too. He mm -hmm. did not waver in obeying the Lord. Yeah. 
as the rest of the events of his reign, they'll be in the book of Kings. But he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. but the people Jesus. were still corrupt. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. But, <laughs> but listen to this. Let's go to Isaiah. So Jotham was a good guy, did what was right in the uh, sight of the mm -hmm. Lord, won wars. I mean, so we learned from his dad some good things, right? Mm -hmm. um, except things. he didn't go into the temple. They made it a point to put that out there, right? Yeah. So if we go to Isaiah, because that's where we want to spend some of our time. Isaiah chapter 6. This is it here. Jesus. Help us, Jesus, right? All right. <laughs> Ready? It says, in the year that King Uzziah died. We'll stop right there. It does not say in the year that Jotham reigned. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. <laughs> it's good. You, Isaiah's eyes, and he's the prophet that was mm -hmm. called. Right. Isaiah's eyes were on the king, mm -hmm. not on, not on the Lord. the Lord. They were on the king. It says, the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne. Let's talk about this. So why, as we were talking earlier, what Uzziah would have saw as, as a child, mm -hmm. what uh, Isaiah yeah. would have saw as a child was Uzziah's greatness. Mm -hmm. Picture that in your head. What does that look like to you? If you were Max and you mm -hmm. saw this like... King. Iron Man of a King coming yeah. out, you know. Yeah, he would see his greatness. Mm -hmm. So when that King, he would see Uzziah sitting on a throne. Mm -hmm. He would see Uzziah doing great, wonderful things. So his picture of a king is Uzziah. Mm -hmm. That's his picture of a king. A corrupt king. And it was corrupt <laughs> because he had yeah. pride. But right. that is his picture of a king. Right. And how many of us think? Our pastors or our teachers are a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That's mm -hmm. not who Christ is. Mm -hmm. This, this is who Christ is. Right. This right. is why we tell you to search it out. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God tells him here in Isaiah 6, you want to know what a king looks like? Because mm -hmm. I'm about done with you. I'm a little upset that you think Uzziah is the picture of the perfect king. Yeah. Because Jotham is doing what's right in my sight. He's winning some wars here. Yeah. He's doing good. Yeah. He could probably use some help because his people won't take down the high places. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that they were doing worse, thing in, worse <laughs> things in yeah. the book of Kings. But it says, in the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne. That's where he would have saw or seen Uzziah. Uzziah, yeah. On a throne. Mm -hmm. God's like, no, I'm going to show you. The true God. The true king. Yeah. And how many of us need to see the true king? Come on. Preach that. Amen. And the hem of the robe filled the throne. The hem of the robe filled the throne. I had asked if we could use your prayer shawl because mm -hmm. the hem of the robe filled the, the throne. And we're also going to talk about the woman with the issue mm -hmm. of blood. Mm -hmm. Because she touched the hem. Yeah. Just the hem. The hem. It filled the temple. Seraphims were standing above him. They were e They each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. And with two, they covered their feet. And with mm -hmm. two, they flew. And one called to the other, Holy, holy, holy mm -hmm. is on. the Lord of armies. Can you mm -hmm. imagine you are Isaiah I, and you think Uzziah is is it he's the one who stands highest we've seen so many pastors here in the united states and in other Country, countries yeah. that are wonderful but we've also seen them fall mm -hmm. right and what does that do to our faith mm -hmm. and we think we've seen majestic things and we think we've seen beautiful things but right now you're isaiah and you're standing in this place and you see these seraphims and you hear the angels and you hear them telling each other, holy, 
Holy, mm-hmm. holy is the Lord of armies. His glory fills right. the whole earth. This is what a king is. Mm-hmm. This is who you need to put your eyes right. on. Amen. Not me. Amen. Not Pastor Pete. Mm-hmm. Not your local pastor. That's right. Follow them the, with yeah. the word. Yeah. But your eyes remain on Christ. Mm-hmm. If I tell you not to look on Christ, sister one, Sister Francis will get mad. <laughs> Two, you you need to flee. <laughs> Right. You must right. keep your eyes on Christ. That's right. Amen. Holy Amen. is the Lord. The foundations of the doorway shook. Mm. How scared are the people power. when there's an earthquake? Yeah. How scared are we when we something's going wrong? They shook. So he hears these loud voices and he feels the foundations mm-hmm. right. shaking. Come on. Yeah. And the sound of their voices and the temples filled with smoke. Then I said, woe is me. Bam. Number five. This is where we need to be. Woe is me. Mm. I am ruined because I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the king. The Lord of Armies. There you go. When you, when see, you him, see, yes. Come on. When you, when see, you him, see him. When you see him, and seeing him means you behold all of him. You you're you're looking at him face to face, and you're saying, Lord, I'm I'm unclean. And there's nothing in me that's clean. No. no. There, my my flesh is unclean. My spirit's unclean. Everything that I say come out of my mouth is un- everything. There's a unclean. motive, right? There's pride. There's whatever it is. Whatever it is we deal with in our in our hearts, we're unclean, Lord. And we have to get to that place where we say, Lord, I, I can't even look at you, God. I can't even, I can't even, I don't even want to look at you because I'm unclean. I'm unclean. So that, that way he can help. come in and say, look, okay. Now he that does. you know that you're unclean, now let me help you. Let me, let me. Yeah. Let me change your mouth. Let me change your heart. Let me change your your spirit, your soul, your body. Let me come in. You're unclean. Amen. Let me clean you. Yeah. And we sing this song. We sing Jesus. this song. Do you understand the significance of this song? Because Isaiah is going in there with, I lost the greatest king ever. Mm-hmm. I lost my idol. Come but now on. we call them American idols, right? But I lost my idol. And God's yep. like, I will show you a king. Mm-hmm. He has to give you a revelation of the truth. Yes. And when you get close to Christ, mm-hmm. if you don't see what's missing in you, and and then it's not Christ you're close to. Yeah. I'm. Right. It's not Christ. Mm-hmm. Be, and this is the word. The foundations of their doorway shook. Then I said, woe to me for I am ruined. Uh-huh. Ruined. That word ruined means that I am just broken, broken yeah. to pieces. Mm-hmm. I am broken to pieces. I'm ruined. I, and the people around me are ruined. We're no good. Mm-hmm. We're no good. We're dust. Mm-hmm. And we're corrupt, Lord. And without you, we can't do anything. Mm-hmm. My right. motives, everything I have to check because next to you, mm-hmm. wow, I'm not a victim. Mm-hmm. I'm the bad guy here. Yeah, you are God, and He's like He tells him, and and this plays in my head because Isaiah would have known that Uzziah walked into the temple. Yeah. And it says, then one of the seraphims flew to me and in his hand was in his hand was a glowing coal. Mm. This is what Uzziah wanted. (laughs) I'm going to give it to you. Mm. But you did what what we wanted Uzziah to do. I am unclean and I am broken and I am sick. Yeah. And I need you. He humbled himself. He was he was humbly coming before the Lord, knowing that he was messed up but he wasn't he wasn't what he thought he was wow. because he's seen the truth of who god was we're not who we think we are mm-hmm. and yeah. we believe our own lives we're, we're we're our own hype men we're our own hype men <laughs> come on he says it he gave me a coal from the altar with tongs not even he would touch it he touched my mouth with and, mouth with it and said now that this has touched your lips now 
your iniquity is removed, and your mm-hmm. sin is atoned. Then I heard a voice from the Lord asking, who should I send? Mm. Who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send Send me. me. Jesus. Here I am. Send me. We are our biggest hype men. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to dethrone ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's hard. You know, I accepted a award one time we say that god is god is good and he is <laughs> we say we love him mm-hmm. and we do and we say to god be all the glory mm-hmm. but is it <laughs> right you know i accepted a, a an award once at um on the dallas cowboy field and it was really awesome um, and it was a great experience and they took very good care of us. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm on, on with this big company and hundreds of people and we get this award on the field and Pete's a, a cowboy fan, Pastor Pete. So it's a big deal to him. And um, I'm Jesus, like, you know, thank him. God, you know, all God gets all the glory. Thank God and blah, 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 blah. And then you do your, you know, social thing. Yeah. And then God, as I'm studying this is, but who got the, who got the award? Did you give it to me or did you take it home? <laughs> I was like, well, you didn't have yeah, I took it home. I took it home. But I get all the glory. But you took the award home. Mm-hmm. We're our own hype men. Yeah. We want, and I, and I don't know how this happens, but it happens. And sometimes we learn to say, we learn to say, God, all glory to God. Mm-hmm. All glory to God. Mm-hmm. I think it's programmed in us because we do church so much. Yeah, that it's programmed in us. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to go there, but it's programmed in us because we're used to hearing it. It's like a a cliche, like a just a quote. Yeah, like we're just quoting something because that's something that we learn, not something that we know. Just something that we learned. And so we go around saying, God is good. God is good. But the moment that you find, find yourself in a trial, the moment, because the Bible says that you're you're supposed to call him good all the time. Yep. So the moment that we find ourselves in a trial, the moment that we find ourselves slipping, the moment that we find ourselves dealing with a situation in our lives, well, God's not really good right now. And you know that because of your behavior. Right. The way you are, the way you're dealing with it, Mm -hmm. how your actions are. And, you know, when you're dealing with something in your life, how do, you know, like when we lost our granddaughter, how I dealt with it is I was mad at God. You weren't good because if you were good, I wouldn't have gone through this pain. If you were good, when I went in and did what you told me to do, you told me to go in and pray. You told me to go in and lay hands on her. You told me to to pray against this. You did it. And, and everything that God told me, I went and did. Now, did she was she healed? Yes, she made it to the other side. One per, 100% whole and healed. So who got the glory? Amen. God still got the glory yeah. and all that. Did but it I didn't want happen it? your way. Right. And it didn't happen my way. And I didn't want to give God the glory when it happened. Because, oh, God's not good right now. Even though I said it all the time. God is good all the time. But was he really good all the time? Yes. Yes, he was. Yes. But I only wanted him to be good when I wanted something from him. Or when I needed something from him. But in the midst of everything that I was going through, God still was good. He was still faithful. He was still God. He was still on the throne. He still knew every situation that I was going to go through. But was God good then? Yes, he was. Yes. And but and I chose back. and I chose to say no God, you're not good right now. Right. Because it was what I chose to believe, how I wanted it to be. His word was still the same. Didn't change. And it he healed her. Change. Right, and he did. So he she, was true to his promise. Right. Now, it wasn't the promise that I wanted. <laughs> no. Because what we do in our lives is when we go through a situation in our lives, we want it to be the promise that we want. Yeah. Not what God is saying. Mm -mm. You know what God is saying? God is saying, okay, you're going to go through this trial, 
but I'm still with you. Right. I'm still faithful. And you're going to come out through this trial on the other side. Amen. If you can see me on the other side, that's where you're going to come out of. But if you don't see me on the other side of this trial, that I'm still good, even in the trial, then what are you going to do? You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Like we you're said, you're going to drown. Hebrews. Like mm-hmm. you said, yeah. you're going to drown because you're not, your eyes are not on him. No, you're not focused on him. They're on someone or something, which yeah. is a high place. Oh, God, we're going to get into that. When I was getting into that, I was like, mm, I don't want to. Let's just clear this out. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to do this. God is with us. God yeah. loves us. God loves us. And we get all the blessings from yeah. Jesus. <laughs> we get all the blessings. We get all the blessings. I That's want. what we want. <laughs> yes. All the blessings. <laughs> but no, he he he's very. We are very good at being our own hero. Mm-hmm. We're our own hero. We we try to be humble and God is good. But like you said, mm-hmm. when the when it gets hot, enduring, despising the shame. Right. Do we despise the shame and keep going? Mm-hmm. Do we keep going? Do you keep going? Or do we stop? Mm-hmm. And sometimes we stop. Yeah, we do. I'm like, I, I was at the place where I'm like, Lord, I'm going to stop. And God's like, well, you better be stopping just to get a little drink of water because you got to keep going. And I'm like, how can you tell me that, Lord? He's like, come get a drink of water. Yeah. And and I'm like, you won't get your healing. And I'm like, drink of water. He says, drink of water. And I'm like, living water. Living water, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, that's where you're going to, that's how you're going to get past what you need to get past with. Yes. The water, my refreshing, my healing, my restoration. Not the way you see it. No. Not the way you want it. No. Because the way I want it looks different. Yeah. And he's like, no, just come drink. Just sit right here and drink with me. And I'm like, well, God, I'm not even thirsty. Well, that's your problem. You're parched. <laughs> he's like, you're dehydrated, you're, girl. That's you your need problem, to. girl. Yes, definitely. And when we follow <laughs> people, me. we don't get healed. Right. Right. We don't get healed. And mm-hmm. we can see that um, we're coming to high places, I promise. But if we go to Luke, Soon Luke later. 8. Luke 8, 43 through 48. It says, while he was going, the crowds were nearly crushing him. A woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years who had spent all she had on doctors. So she was following Mm -hmm. doctors and yet could not be healed any approached. She couldn't yet. She could not be healed by any. She approached him from behind and touched the end of his robe. Instantly, her bleeding stopped. Come on. Instantly, her bleeding stopped. So as you study this, it said that she was in a crowd of people, and she did what was proper for a woman to do in that time. She went to the doctor, Mm -hmm. and there are other versions. She went to the doctor like she was supposed to. She followed man's rules. She did everything that she needed to do. How many of us are sick? Come on, yeah. We're sick. Mm -hmm. We're lacking joy. We're lacking peace. Mm -hmm. We have some type of hatred amongst our brothers Mm -hmm. there's no unity we're stuck in isolation and not due to covid but we refuse to go and help each Mm -hmm. other grow because of anger and rage or pride right right so so the rules say that if i'm mad at you i don't i don't talk to you because you did me wrong and Mm -hmm. you owe me i owe you love love yeah Oh, man, that's going to be hard to walk that out. It is. I'm going to have to call you every day now. (laughs) No, it's very hard. And it says that while he was going through the crowd Mm -hmm. where they were nearly crushing him, Mm -hmm. she grabbed the hem. She wasn't even supposed to be there. Nope. Not with the issue of blood. She has the issue of blood. By law, she shouldn't have been there. Right. By law, she should not have been there. She probably was crawling on her knees to get through the crowd because there's so there were so many people there i mean if you have people i mean like i've been to places where there's people upon people yeah and i want to go to the restroom and you can't get past them them. and you're you know like yeah and can you imagine no hundreds and thousands of people wanted jesus just just pray for me pray for me pray for me and she's like i'm gonna do it i got it and she went through there Mm mm-hmm 
She was no longer going to follow to people. She if she would have been if she would have got caught, she would have died. She would have died instantly because they would have took her out and stoned her. Yeah. She but she didn't care. No. I you know what? Jesus is my last resort. That's all I got left. That's where my eyes go. That's I will all I, have I will left. push through a crowd. Mm-hmm. A crushing crowd. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes. I won't follow people no more. Even though that's the right thing to do. She did Mm -hmm. what was right. She went to the doctor for 12 years. Mm -hmm. She spent her life savings. Mm -hmm. And she approached him from behind. She came anywhere she could. She said, my eyes can no longer be on people. Because it's not working. It's not working if, Mm -hmm. if... Pastor Pete is my God. It is not working. If Sister Francis is my God, it is not working. I wasn't right. getting healing from my father passing away if people were my God. That's Bible right. study wasn't my, I, it wasn't working. Right. I love to study the Bible, but it wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Following man wasn't working right, yeah. until I got on my hands and on my knees and I pushed through the crowd of mm-hmm. hate and bitterness and anger right. that he no longer was alive. And I just went with my hand and said, Lord, help me. Mm-hmm. I have an issue. I have an issue. Yeah. And I can't. I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I've gone through the right ways, God, but yeah. I'm not getting any help. Yeah. I'm not getting better. And mm-hmm. you're the only one that can help me. Mm-hmm. I can't get through this without you. Mm-hmm. I don't care what's standing in my way. I don't care how embarrassing it is. I am going to you, mm-hmm. the author and the finisher of my faith. Amen. I will go to you and I will reach out and I will touch Amen. the hem of your garment because yeah. you're the only only thing that is true mm-hmm. and constant. Mm-hmm. Amen. And the Bible said virtue came from it. Wow. That's virtue. Crazy. Power. Came Power. Because he stopped. Yeah. And he's like, everybody, oh, who touched me? Who touched me? And they're like, well, everybody's touching you, Jesus. And I'm sure the the disciples were there trying they, to get, yeah. you know, everybody touched. Who, everybody's here, Lord. Yes. But power came from him. Virtue from heaven. Pulled because of her sincerity, because of her her wanting wanting to see Jesus, wanting that like her only hope. And he made himself available. Your Lord God is not hard to find. Amen. Amen. He walks through what you're going through. Amen. If you're going through loneliness, if you're going through denial, if you're going through rage, if you're going through anger, your Lord is with you. Amen. The hem of his garment fills the temple. They are saying, holy, 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 yes. holy is the Lord. And they are waiting to give you a call Amen. to heal you. Amen. That is the God that you serve. He's waiting to be king for you Mm -hmm. like he was king for Isaiah. He's like, men aren't going to do it for you. Uzziah, great guy, but he ended it in the end the wrong way. He's not going to do that Mm -hmm. for you. You were right, Isaiah, when you said wickedness. Mm -hmm. I am wicked. We're all wicked. Help me. Forgive me. Find me. Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is the answer. He is the only way. If I make myself your God, if I make myself your king, or pride is the fall. It's the the fall. fall. Yep. It's the fall. And it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Isaiah was a great prophet and it happened to him. God had to make it straight. Mm -hmm. And he had to tell him, whoa, whoa, I am God. I'll show you a vision. You want a vision? I'll show you a vision of what a real king looks like. Mm -hmm. It happened to um, Paul and Barnabas. Oh, yeah. (laughs) They thought they were Greek gods. Uh They instantly like, we are men just like you. (laughs) Yeah. Don't put your eyes on us. Mm -mm. Jesus, no. Put your that. eyes on God, Jehovah, Amen. Jireh, your banner, your hiding place, Amen. where your feet do not stumble, who will carry you, who will make himself available to Amen. you. If you just reach out and touch the hem of his garment, Amen. that means that you're on your knees because it's low and you're asking him to help mm-hmm. you. Help me, Lord. Amen. Amen. That is where your help comes from. Right. We can help. 
guide you through the scripture. Mm -hmm. We can help. This is what we read. This is a good, but he is who saves. That's right. right. Amen. We're, we're nothing. We're, we're dust. We're dust. (laughs) We're merely dust. I'm like, he's taking me back to dust. Jesus, help help us. us. Leaders, I'm asking you to take this as a warning. Because if Isaiah fell for it, we all will fall for it. Amen. People will follow us and we for who we are. Right. And the right. truth of the matter is what God made me understand is we like it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No matter how humble we are, we like it and, and we'll take the help. Mm-hmm. And, and the Holy Spirit be like, this isn't right. Mm-hmm. It's what's in it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Lead them to me. When they're they're doing things for you, lead them to me. Yeah. Paul said, I just want to know the God inside of you. Mm. I just want to know the God inside of you. Jotham didn't have a chance. Poor God. <laughs> poor guy. I, that's what I'm saying. Poor After guy. all of them, I'm all like, poor guy. We're, we're, we're he didn't nervous. have a chance. He said that he, he coming back to him and, and this, I you Isaiah keeping his eyes on Uzziah and Jesus mm-hmm. or God snapping him back in, saying, "No, no, your eyes are on me. I mean, yeah. Help these kings. Right, right. Help them because they're trying." He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but he's not holding his people accountable. accountable. Yeah, right. He didn't destroy the high places. No. And, you know, high places, what are high places? It says high places. There's sites elevated. This is so bad. Mm-hmm. High places <laughs> are so sites bad. elevated on hilltops and dedicated to worship, worship. pagan mm-hmm. gods. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, he did what, in 2 Kings 15, if you're writing this down, 2 Kings 15, 32 through 35, explains exactly what Jotham would let the people do. Mm. He was good, and he did what was right in, in the sight of the Lord, right. so he was good. And it doesn't say that he didn't. Yeah. But he let them keep their high, high, high places. Yeah. He let, and, and 2 Kings will tell you this, 2 Kings 15, 32, 35, check mm-hmm. it. So sometimes it's a test, ask the NJCers. Yeah. It says I that the people still Someday. burned incense. <laughs> yeah. He let them burn incense. Right. They worship something. other gods. Mm-hmm. God, how God's people in were were going to high places in God's promised land and burning incense to other gods. Mm. Can you imagine that? Well, what are like? If we look at it now, what are those places of worship for us? Oh, yeah. What do we worship? Do we worship money? Do we worship uh, sex? Do we worship pornography, jobs, time, drugs, ourselves? Do we worship ourselves? You know, what? what is it? What is it? What is that high place for us? Yes. What? Because that high place for us is an idol. And that's what gets us in trouble. There it is. There it is. Jotham didn't make them take them down. Mm. He didn't hold them responsible. And I thought about it. I'm like, well, he was good, Lord. Uh. (laughs) But I'm good, Lord. But I'm good. But I'm good. I know your word. I read it. But I'm good, Lord. He's like, (laughs) but he didn't make them respect me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would I allow someone to go into Sister Frances' house and disrespect her? No. No, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Mm Mm-mm. I would not. At, at, at my age, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done it younger. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Disrespect me. One thing, disrespect my... No, Sister Francis right. will not be disrespected. Mm-hmm. Yet, Jotham let them disrespect say, yet, God. Yeah, we let the enemy do that. Even in our homes. Willingly. With our families. Yeah. We allow the enemy to come and disrespect. But in reality, if we haven't taken any idols out, the enemy has every right to come and dis do to come in and do that yeah because we haven't took the idols down no 
and we allow those worship that worship of those things whatever the idol is we allow that in our homes and then we wonder why our home is in chaos falling apart why everything our is kids. going on right us 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 when because why we we're falling apart tear down why can i have peace of mind why can i have a a, a good heart mm-hmm. why do i have all these issues because I must tear down my idols. And I right. can't do that unless I am seated like Isaiah in front of the Lord. Right. That right. reflection will only come from Christ. Mm-hmm. It'll only come from his word. Right. Like you said, it's a two-edged sword, but it's meant to heal mm-hmm. you. God, and, and you're right. Th- these idols that we have nowadays, they're no different than Jotham. Mm-hmm. We live in these homes. We live in these blessings, yet we keep idols inside and think it's okay or we'll make mm-hmm. excuses for them mm-hmm. well i need to relax i work all week and i have <laughs> don't kids. say it pastor don't and say we it. have a ministry so i think i deserve to watch 24 hours of netflix series <laughs> sex in the city oh definitely no we can't even <laughs> say that word but yeah, no, but this really. Free, this is a free airwave right here. But I'm saying, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. But no, what are you watching? What are you right, looking at? Right. What are you spending your time on? I don't even know if Sex and City's on Netflix. Just saying, guys. So <laughs> You're don't like, go I'll Google it. Look it up. Don't look it up. But, you know, yeah, it's true. It's true. What are we allowing? What idols? Because the pagan gods, there was different things they did to different idols. Yes. And when they worshiped that idol, that's what was brought forth in their homes. Oh, so Jesus. if they if they worship the goddess Diana, what was brought into their home? Yeah. The lust, the perverse That's spirits, good. those kind of yeah. things. So what we idolize is what we pull and bring into our homes because our homes are supposed to be our tabernacle, our Amen. safe place. Good. Our holy places. Amen. So if we're not having the holies of holies in our home, then what's infiltrating our homes? Yeah. How is it coming in? And, you know, and I'm saying that because I'm speaking for me. Nope. Me too. I'm speaking for me. What am I watching? What am I listening? What am I hearing? What am I putting in? What am I thinking? And the Bible says take every thought captive. captive. That means it's going to come like this. Yes. But if you're not taking it captive, then you're allowing it to rule and reign in you and in your home. Yes, amen. And so what happens is these pagan gods, these idols, these things, these places of worship are even up in your homes and you're like, "Oh, it's okay. It's just a show. It's or, or it's just this. It's just that. It's okay." And then you're in the back of your mind, you know by the spirit of God that you should not be hearing it or watching it or whatever. Yeah, amen. And so so when it when you are then you go to church on Sunday and you're like, oh, pastor's just condemning us. She's so horrible. She's so religious. <laughs> She's all that word. Always the word. Always the word. Yeah, because there's an idol there. Because the word always comes in to break and bring the truth. Amen. God is good. And so you're thinking, oh, and see what happens is the word of God comes in to destroy the high places. Yes. Jotham, I'm like, why is he responsible, Lord? Why is, and God's like, because he is He's, king. Yeah. He and has authority. He has authority. That's his kingdom, right? Right then and there. Bam. The same thing with our homes. This is our home, but this is our kingdom. Yes. So what we allow in, we cannot, we, Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, the weapons of our warfare. Yes. If we're not warfaring. Then don't be complaining like, when the enemy's in, in your house. I uh, Tracy Baraja, she has a, when I first met her, Hi, with, Tracy. within uh, the first times that I met her, it was funny because she would have her, she'd be brooming. And she would say, I'm going to broom these spirits out of here. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, that's a little weird. But um, no, but that's the truth. You have yeah. to get them out. If not, you're just opening the door for them to come mm-hmm. in by what we're watching, by what we're doing. And like you said, we are, of, of we have the authority to say no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have the authority. And let's. Let's read this script, this word, uh, Ephesians 6 and 12. I have it in my notes, so I know that it's it's uh, what he wants us to say or Amen. wants me to say, or he wouldn't let me put it in there. I mean, we know it, but I want to read it from the word because I can do it. I can quote it, but then I might be in oh, yeah. trouble and quote it wrong. You're and right. I don't want nobody inboxing okay. me later. Ephesians what? 
<laughs> 6 and 12. Okay. For we do not wrestle against flesh and no. blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the world's rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Yes. So that means these things are already set up in high places. And if those things are never destroyed in our lives, then we give them full access to reign in our lives. Yeah. And so we cannot, we cannot blame God for what we do. Right. When in reality, it's because we know it's not flesh and blood we're wrestling against, but against principalities and powers. But God, I don't, I, I don't understand the spirit. I don't, under, you know, but the word tells you. <laughs> You're reading it. How can you not? Does, it yeah, says amen. right there. It says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So it's not your brother and sister. No. It's not this. It's not. It's the spirit. It's the principality that you're warring against. You wonder why your mind's in torment because you're wrestling with your flesh and not the spirit of God. Amen. You're not tearing down strongholds. You're not going against the principalities, against the power, Amen. against the rulers. of What are the rulers of this world? Lust, pornography, um, drugs. Alcohol, all this rage, other stuff. Rage, hate, rage, anger. Ang right. Yeah. Any, any, anything that's not of the fruit of the Spirit. Right. Is against God's law. Yeah. Because we walk by the fruit of the Spirit, yes. right? Yes. So when we're dealing with all these things, it, it says against spiritual wickedness in high places. The, those are those high places that we erected. Yeah. That we didn't pull down. No. And we're wondering why the enemy's after us because we already had that high place. It could be ourselves. What do I want, God? I want this. I need this. Give me this. Give me, give me, give me. It's all about me, the mighty me. So you erected these wickedness in high places already. And now you're having to come tear down that wall. But I can't do it. No. Because you're doing it by the flesh and not by the spirit. Amen. And the closer we get to God's word, the closer we get to <laughs> Christ, the closer that we reach to him, he will show us exactly what we need to do. Right. And he right. will heal us. Right. He will heal us. And like you said, we this is we have the authority to tear mm -hmm. down those right. high places right. with his power. With his blood, with his sacrament, we have the authority to bring mm -hmm. all this down. But right. we choose not to. We choose to make excuses. We choose to say this right, is easier. Pastor. We choose <laughs> to say, well, it's not that bad. Um, we choose to say, no, instead of lining it up. not as bad as sister no, so-and-so. No, so I'm good. <laughs> Let's just line everything. I, I tell everybody, let's just line it up with the word. Right. Right. I start with me. Line it up with the word. Yeah. Line it up with the word. Pastor Peter, I'll be like, I'm upset. You have made me. <coughs> uh, sir, nobody can make you upset. What's in your heart? I'm like. Uh -huh. Like, I don't hear it, Pastor. I don't hear it right now. Right. So, I want you to be my husband right now. Don't be my pastor. I know. <laughs> That's what I tell him. And he, and then I go back and I'm like, you know what? Oh, I do have right. this in here. Yeah. How do I get rid of it? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, show me. I see yeah. it. I'm not yeah. going to deny what he says that time right. i'm gonna be like lord help me see what's wrong with me right. help me well and he does second corinthians 10 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly no. but mighty through Amen. god to the pulling down of strongholds you know pulling down pulling down pulling down and 10 5 says pulling down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god Good, look at the word and bring it into captivity. Every thought into the obedience of Christ. Destroying it. How yeah. do you destroy it? With the sword of the spirit. Right. With the word of God. With the word of God. With the word of God. You know, what, what are these arguments that go in our mind? I what see. is in our mind that's telling us, no, well, you're not righteous. No, the, the Lord doesn't love you. No, no, no. All the the father of lies comes yes. in and he distorts our way of thinking because we don't go in and pull down the strongholds. No, we don't. We allow those strongholds to continue in our lives and we go and, you know, oh, my God, we blame our parents. Mm hmm. We blame uh, society. Mm -hmm. We blame whatever. And because we did not pull down the stronghold that has kept us. And I'm speaking for me because it took me 25 years. Yeah. T uh, took her 12 years. It took me 25 years yeah. to see the stronghold that kept me. That kept me work for all these years. 
where I was at. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. He said, if you would have just took that vain imagination. And how long did that take? Oh, God, 25 years. But it took him that, like that. Yeah, when how I, when long I, did it take for you to say it to right, God, it, though? Right, it took that. It was a split second yep. when I said, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm done with this. Amen. I can't carry this. It's not my burden. No. And then all of a sudden, the father of lies said this to me. The enemy said this. Don't go say that. Because once you say it, it's out in the atmosphere. Yeah. And if it's out in the atmosphere, then then what can happen with you saying it with your mouth? And I thought, that sounds dumb. Like, I literally, <laughs> I literally, when whenever I was telling my husband, I said, that sounds, I mean, I'm thinking it. I'm, and the enemy's like, don't say it. Don't tell him. Don't say it. And I'm sitting there thinking, why would I not say it? Right. That is so dumb. Confess your sins to one another. Yeah. That's what it, the Lord's like. Confess your sins to one another. And I'm like, I'm not confessing that to him. Confess. And I just kept hearing the Lord say it and say it and say it. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I started paying attention of what's coming out of my mouth. That was in your heart for 20 something. Years. Oh, can you imagine what it's planted? All those. Oh, the root, the root of that and where it went, just like <laughs> it does in agriculture, everything that it destroyed in its path. So you've never, and if you have experienced joy, if you have, which I'm sure you have, it was for a fullness, fleeting. But yeah. not the fullness no. of joy. And it was fleeting. Right. It was not the fullness of no. it. No. It was only, oh, for a little bit, but then I would regress back and think, man, why do I keep going back? Right. Right. Because I, w I hid this in my heart for so long. Right. And because I hid it in my heart, the weeds grew in. Oh, no. And then all of a sudden, with every, even if I tried, the unworthiness feeling yeah. would always come back. Yeah. And I would be like, oh, God, I feel so unworthy of your grace and your mercy. And the Lord's like... You need to just, and like, I felt like the Lord told me just, you know, like, be quiet for a few minutes because I, I can't get all this. <laughs> and I'm like, God, just the unworthy. And then, you know what? I'm, like, I have a bunch of notes. Awesome. But, but he gave me Romans. Let's read that really okay. quick because this is what, you know, people are thinking, I can't get through this, God. I, I'm dealing with this, God. I don't know if I can. And you're dealing with your own insecurities. You're dealing with everything in your own heart. And you're thinking, God, but but I, I can't tell this. You have to. Yes. I can't tell this because if I tell this, then I can't hold on to it anymore. Right. Because it's like this. Jesus, take this away. And it's. <laughs> he's like, take what? I'm like this. Like, take yeah, this Yeah, I away. see it. <laughs> but I, I want to hold it. But I want to hold it. Because I'm used to it. Because I'm and comfortable with it. And security. <clears throat> because it was, it was an idol. Yeah. Because if I held this. Then I have a reason to be mad. Then I have a reason to be bitter. Then I have a reason to be angry. No. Then I have a reason. And then I, all of that in my heart. And I'm carrying this for <laughs> for 20 something years. Okay. And But then I was like, God, if I, but Lord, you know what? If I tell this, I'm going to feel so separated from you. And vulnerable. Because, right. Because I, I'm humbling myself. To the person that I wanted to hate and be angry to right. and resent and da 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 da, so all these emotions, and I'm like, Lord, you you'll stop loving me. You'll stop loving me because see what I was was I felt like I was the wounded puppy and God would have to come save right. me. Right. <laughs> and God like, whatever. You're not wounded. <laughs> Get up. But I would always say, God, do you still love me even though I had to come clean with this? I had to. You know, I, because I just felt like, okay, now I just can't do ministry. I can't preach. I can't, you know, like I yeah. just felt vulnerable for a moment. Yeah. And then I, I get the scripture and I'm like, I've read the scripture a million times. And it, maybe Romans 8 and 35, probably. Yeah. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Or what? Shall tribulation. Yeah. Or distress. Or persecution. Amen. Or famine. Mm-hmm. Or nakedness. See, that's what I felt. I was vulnerable. Yeah. I was naked because I was sharing my heart. Or peril or sword. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? And he's telling us this because he's like, this is coming. And I'm telling you, it won't. It won't move me, Christ. It won't move me from loving you. 
Your mistakes that you make won't move me from loving you. 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Not your your insecurities. No. Not principalities. No. Not rulers in high places. No. Nothing can separate us from the love no. of Jesus. The I'm love of convinced, Christ. he said. Like, in other words, I, I've been through I, hell. I, I, yes. No big deal. Because mm. I'm convinced. Even though you're going through hell, people, be convinced. Yes. Be convinced that nothing, not... Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. No, not no. how you feel. No. Not the emotions of no. it. Not, oh, God, I feel lonely. God, I feel sad. God, I feel tired. God, I... None of that can separate you from the one that loves you. No. He went to the cross for you. He'll come running for you. He's t He doesn't want you to be sick no more. Mm -mm. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to go to him. He wants to tell you these things will come. But you have the power through my son. Amen. And nothing, nothing, what you're going through right now, I tell my, what you're going through right now will separate you from me. Mm -hmm. We talked about earlier how he had told Peter, do you love me? Mm -hmm. After right. he did the worst thing, denied <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And the, the way they portrayed it, the way you read it, that he's looking at the Savior as he's warming his hands amongst the same guards that were beating him. And he's he fits right in. Well, how many other men of God? David, Saul, <sighs> you know, how many of them could have said, you know what? I, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. I did this. I'm out of here. I can't do this yeah. anymore. But God restored David. David, oh my Abraham. God. If you read Psalms, yeah. David was like. You can he feel his cries. He's like, God, where did you go? You know, I, and he's hiding from God, yeah. but he's still looking for God. Yeah. In the midst of everything that he did wrong. And God's like, okay, now I'm going to restore you because you're looking for me. Right. How many of us? There's so many things that we've done that we've gone through in our lives that that the enemy wants to say, you know what? It's too much. It's too much. You you know you're you're separated. Right. He, he no longer you're no longer fit through that crowd Jesus. of people. You've gone too far, and 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 he does that, and you know he does that most to believers. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we say, which we were talking about earlier, we say we know better. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. God's like, no, no, you were your own king. Right, right. Like Isaiah, let me show I, you who the real king is. Yeah, and I wrote. Who you need to I wrote bow down, down to. Idolatry weakens and destroys us. It does. That's what, that's what weakens us. Idolatry, whatever it is, whatever that idol is, whether oh. it's us, whether it's our work whether it's you know whatever it, it is anything that separates us anything yeah anything we that need to tear down everything that separates us from god that's what i wrote down yeah Lord. you know i'm telling you people this is not just for you guys no it was for this, me this was for me yeah and i'm like well god how can i tear it down how can i separate all this how can i pull the idols down and the lord said worship prayer fasting bible study meditating on my word and that's what and Jesus I'm like, did. Oh my God, that's so easy. He's like, well, I'm, undoubtedly it's not because if it was so easy, you would have had all this done. In the Old Testament, <laughs> he would say, he would tell the runners, write, write, it, write, write it, it down, write it yeah. down, so that when they run past, they can see it while they're running. Run. Oh, that's while, good. That's while good. they're running, not so that they can stop and be like, oh dear, my God, you know, no, while they're running, they have to be able to see what is written. So write it, and the runners keep running. Runners wow. keep running. That's good. Keep running. And how do we tear down strongholds? Mm -hmm. By the word of God. Right. You take your thoughts captive. What's captive mean? Mm -hmm. When you get arrested. I've never been arrested. Thank you, Jesus. But if you've been arrested. <laughs> have you been arrested? I've been in a cop car, but not arrested. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. Um, yeah, they take you captive, right? They yeah. put, they, they take you right. captive. He's telling you, take every, that you take every thought captive. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
How do you do it? How do you break down by Bible study? Take every thought captive and line it up with the word of God. Right. That's going to take some work. Mm -hmm. We talked last week about Uzziah and how he grew in wisdom and in power, but he did, or no, he grew in power, but he did not grow in wisdom and stature like Jesus. We need to grow. Mm Mm-hmm. And we need to take his word. And if I'm and I, if I'm feeling sick, you, we don't go by feeling. We go by what is written. Right, Look, right. Jesus said it is written. Man does not live by bread right, alone. Right. Well, I wrote down take captive means that you use a weapon to subdue it. So what's the weapon? The word. The word? The word. We must separate our head and our heart with the truth about ourselves from the word. Yeah. There you go. Read that again. We must separate our head and our heart with the truth about ourselves from the word. There you go. Tear it down. Tear That's it down. Tear it down. Yeah. That's how you tear it down. How do you know what? When Whenever I was dealing with this thing and I was like, you know, oh, but my heart was telling me, you know, don't. You need to say this. Oh, you no. need to do this. No. And my head was like, no, oh, there's no way. And then I started reading the word of God. And the word is like, like I'm the truth. And you have to tear down strongholds. And I'm like, oh, no, my God, Jesus. <laughs> and yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to read that. I don't want to read. But then, but then it came back to, well, they did not tear down the, the places the of high worship. Places. The places of worship. Mm-mm. And I thought, you know what? And they also, what did I got to tear say? this down. Yeah. I got to tear this down, Lord. I don't care how it, think about it. To tear something down is going to hurt. It's work. Right. Because you know what? If I was to tell my boys, look, I need you to tear this whole studio down. What would they have to do? It's cement. Right. They'd mm-hmm. have to get a jackhammer to do the cement. We, um, we, when we were in our church in Texas, we tore down a wall. Me and three, or me and two ladies, we tore down a wall. And let me tell you, it wasn't oh, easy. Snap. We, we got the, the jackhammer and we were like, yeah. I mean, the, the sledgehammer, we we're hitting the walls and then we we're pulling stuff down. All that stuff was flying everywhere. We we're all well, you white. Stuff flying down. Yeah. So as we start tearing down, other things Come are on coming. Now. Yeah. Other things yeah, are coming. Yeah. There was stuff flying oh, okay. everywhere, all in our hair. And then all of a sudden, all the stuff, this, this, pink whatever that's called insulation <laughs> and then insulation's itchy so here yeah. we are so here we are we're itching all of a sudden our body feels like we're on fire like man what is this and then all of a sudden we're still pulling stuff down because we're adamant about tearing down this wall Amen. we needed adamant. this wall because we needed people to come in we needed room and so we're starting to tear this wall down and we're starting to get tired oh. and it's like oh i'm getting tired you know and the wall is like not even half done it's like just one side because yeah, you get to do the other works. side, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then we're sitting there and then one of the ladies like, oh, you know, I'm getting kind of hungry. Well, then let's sit down. Uh-oh. Let's eat a little lunch. That's what happens. So then we get tired and then we sit down. So here we are. We're sitting down. Then we start talking and then we're like, oh, well, we can do the wall tomorrow. I love this example. And then, you know, it's like, okay, and it's Friday. We have church Sunday. We can do the wall tomorrow. Or oh, let's just wait till the guys get out of work and we'll have them come help us, our husbands. And then I'm like, no, we got to tear this wall down. Because yeah. my husband comes home, I'm going to be in trouble. Because we said we we're going to tear this wall down and we didn't, we're not doing it. So I begin to tell them, no, we got to do it, man. We got to do it. And they're like looking at me like, oh, we're tired. I'm like, I'm tired too, but we got to get this wall done. So here we are. We get up and we start tearing down this wall. And we're tearing it down and we're laughing because we're like, man, we're a bunch of ladies tearing down a wall. Then all of a sudden the door opens and here comes my husband. Aww. Here comes my boys. Here Aww. comes, here comes the other guys. They're and helping? I'm like, yeah. And then everybody gets there and I'm like, so you weren't alone. No, I wasn't alone. Are and you alone all, now? No. <laughs> Yay. So now we're tearing down these wall and all the ladies are like, wow. And then we just stepping back and the walls coming down. And it wasn't easy. It was not easy. And you know what? But help arrived. Help came. Help came. Jesus sent help yes. to come. And that's what he'll do. Right. But the work needs done. But you have to start it. You have to start it. You had to start it. And it was, it was, when we first hit the first blow, oh, this is easy. Oh, easy this peasy. is so easy. Then you start pulling. Then the insulation is like, oh, it's not as easy as we thought. Now. Then the two by fours. Oh, are you kidding me? You know, how are we going to tear this down? And my my friend, she's little bit probably about as short as me 
She's like, oh, we're going to tear this down. She was already mad by then <laughs> because <laughs> this this board was was not going to take her out. Yeah. And we're like, Pastor, we have to do this. All these people will be here Sunday. And, you know, we have to have this torn down. And then all of a sudden, here comes all the guys. Isn't that awesome? Can I can I can visually see here it. Here comes all these guys, these men getting off of work. We worked hard all day. We got there like at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And here comes all these guys. And get it done. And I, Jesus, you're sending the Calvary. Amen. For me. Yes. To get this done. Yeah. For church. For church. To praise and worship him. Right. Which brings you back to your worship. These high places, if we don't take care of them, we are worshiping. We are. I, I want you to say that. I am worshiping another God. I don't even want to say that. I'm scared. Right? <laughs> I am worshiping another <coughs> God if I right. do not. I am vol- I am willingly worshiping another God if I do not take down that high place. So I want man, I wish I had a dry erase board or a chalkboard or something yeah. so that I can say what who is your God? And who is your God? Who is your is God? it you? Is it money? Is it your fame? Is it whatever? Yeah. Who is your God? What is your God? Fame. You said fame. Jotham. Mm-hmm. Why didn't he make those people tear, tear down. down the strong Because he wanted to be the king towers. that they loved. His dad. <laughs> and he knew if he told them this isn't right, because he obviously knew what was right. Yeah. He knew what was right. He said, they said he knew it. But if he told the people, then he wouldn't have been like as loved yeah. as his people. father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, if you go to Kings, it says 2 Kings 15, 32 to 35, but we're going to read 35. Yet the high places were not taken away. The people continued sacrificing and burning incense mm-hmm. on the high places. He would have smelled the dead bodies mm-hmm. or the dead carcasses of these animals. And he allowed this to happen so that he could have some portion of what his father had. This, though... Hadn't been taken away since Moses. Jesus. If you're not worshiping Christ, who are you worshiping? You're worshiping Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. You're worshiping something. We used to always say, who's your daddy? (laughs) So who's your daddy? Yeah. Who who is is it self? Right. Because the Bible says... And who's that the, the devil father? is the father of lies. Yes. So you could be God the Father, or you could be the father, the father of lies. Who's who's your daddy? Yeah. Who are you worshiping? And you know what the father of lies tells you? You're okay. Yeah. You don't have to tell. It's not a big deal. You don't have to tell nobody that. No. You know, Pastor Biggie, keep that in your heart a little bit longer. It's not going to hurt you. No. You've, you've, you've made it 20 something years with that in your heart. Yeah. Keep it. It's okay. Nobody's going to know. Yep. Or you're, you're doing it. You're doing a good job. Yeah. You're helping all these people on, on Kingdom Talk for 20 something years. But you're, you're dying. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Come you're on. doing what's right. Come on. You're going to the doctor. You're going to your search, ch- church services. You take, you're doing everything you're that is meds, right. You're taking meds oh. so that you can drown out what you're dealing with. Right. Because you don't want to deal with it. Right. And I'm speaking that for me because I went and look, we're getting, this is transparency sitting right here because I went, I was dealing with something about a month, couple of months ago, went to my doctor and she's like, here you go. Here's some antidepressants. These will help you. Yeah. These will make you feel better. Yeah. Took them for two days and I felt worse. Yeah. Felt worse because like, nope, because, because my emotions yeah, those were those were diminished, but my mind didn't stop. Oh, it won't stop. And I continue, continually was thinking the thoughts that I was thinking, even though I was taking those. And it made me numb for a little bit. And it made me feel like, oh, you know what? I'm okay. But I'm taking not. these drugs. I'm fine. Mm-mm. But I had a secret in my heart Yeah, that I kept for 20-something years. 20-something years, Pastor. And I never told anybody this yeah. Until I had to come clean because God is saying, you can't, I can't. You got to tear this down. If you do not tear this down, you. I was dying spiritually thinking I was okay. No. And thinking then you I cover it fine. up with. And th- that's the scent. The scent. Can you imagine the scent? Mm. Everything that you covered up. 
everything that you did. And and the people continued sacrifice and burning incense in the high places. Mm -hmm. And you were continuing to burn that incense. And it was the smell of sin. Of sin. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's not what lines up with Mm -hmm. the word of God. That includes me. God is showing me. He was showing me for the last two years. You, Esther, you, Mm -hmm. you need to look at you. Yeah. You, what are your motives behind every relationship you have? Mm-hmm. What are your motives for growing the church? What are your motives right. for Bible study? Right. What are your motives at work? What are your motives when you accept that award? What mm-hmm. are your motives with what you steward, the money that I give you? Mm-hmm. What are your motives? Is right. it to lift me up and honor me? Or do you truly like the accolades of, mm-hmm. well, she's kind, she's humble, she'll help us. She, he's like, deal with you. Yeah. And then I will make your hands to war like David. Deal with you. Tell the truth. Tell Mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. How long do you want to just be sick? Mm -hmm. Is 12 years was too much for her. So she went looking for Christ. Right. And in in the midst of these 20 something years, I played a good part. I played a good part. Yeah. Like Like them. You didn't, didn't know you were captive. No, I didn't. And I didn't know until reality came and hit me in my face. And I'm like, what am I doing? What am I dealing with this for? It's not, why do I even, why am I even carrying this? It's not even my stuff. (laughs) Why am I dealing with this in my heart? The only person I'm hurting is me. The only person that's angry is me. The only person that's bitter is me. But I could play a good part because, okay, well, let me get the scripture to help me for a few minutes. Right. And it felt good for a few minutes. For a few minutes. But when you walked away. It yeah. It came back. It came back. It was like it was like it was like Saul, when the music was going. Yeah. Oh, he David, felt good. David was playing music. Saul's yeah. like, "Woo, hallelujah, glory to the Lord, I'm good." Yeah. When and he then, stopped. When he stopped, what happened? Torment. Torment. And who sent the torment? The, the Bible says. Lies. <laughs> oh, the Bible says God. God. Oh yeah, God sent it to, to Saul. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, to Saul, so that he could repent. But he didn't. So want to he repent. could repent. Didn't want to repent. Wanted to keep it. And he Jesus. went, no. And same with Uzziah. And he went, Jotham crazy. didn't want to knock those down because he wanted to be like Light. his father. He mm-hmm. wanted to be liked. Yeah. He wanted to be liked. I, the, the verse is where it, um, he says, Galatians 1.10. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to win the favor of men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to win the favor of men anymore. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to lead you to a to God who healed me. Yeah. Through a difficult, horrific mm-hmm. time and then I made difficult, horrific decisions, yet God still let his light shine upon me. God still allowed me to enjoy my husband and my three wonderful children, the my family restoration and mm-hmm. growth. Amen. That is the God that we serve. That mm-hmm. as soon as we say, we need you, I'm sick. I'm sick and I'm dying and I can't do this alone. Mm-hmm. My life doesn't match up to your word. Help me tear these high towers down. Help me. Like you said, bring the Calvary because I'm getting tired. Mm -hmm. But the truth is this, we have to tear them down. Yeah. We have to tear them down. And if we're afraid, ask him. He says, ask Mm -hmm. and you shall receive. Yeah. Ask for wisdom. How do I speak to my friends with love and with boldness and with your, with you, Lord, knowing that it's their souls and their peace of mind that's Mm -hmm. at stake. Teach me to speak like you did. Teach me to love like Mm -hmm. you loved. Give me that. Your word says that I have not because I ask not. Well, I ask you to make me love them the way you love them. And Mm -hmm. he's like, then die to self. Man, Leviticus twenty six thirty says when the oh, Lord, oh sweet Lord, yeah, mm-hmm. when the Lord's like, okay, you want disobedience? He says, and I will destroy your high places Who and will? cut down. God will. So either way, they're coming down. Yep, and cut down your your image, uh, your images, and throw your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols. Your carcasses on the carcasses of what the dead animals you brought uh-huh. me. 
and my soul shall despise you. That's very awesome. I mean, that, that's scary, but I meant, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I will make your cities waste and cause your sanctuaries to be desert, uh, deserted. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will turn the land into wasteland and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it and i will scatter you among the nations and i will dry draw out a sword after you and your land shall be waste and your cities waste wow he said he's gonna destroy them Someone's so you can keep them. them you can keep them if you want but they're oh uh, they they're will eventually down. be destroyed and i'd rather destroy it myself than have god come in and say okay you think you're okay bam yeah i know bam let me come destroy it. Yeah. And he shows you how to do it. In his word, he will show us how to tear down these strongholds, mm -hmm. how to match up what we're going through with the word of God. He'll teach yeah. us what the war, the enemy does. Cain, he's at your door. Yeah. Why is your countenance down? Yeah. The enemy's at your door waiting to see if he can devour mm -hmm. you. So he already tells you he's coming. Yeah. Like you said, Galatians, the fruit of the spirit. These are the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. He's like, these are the works of the flesh. Are you feeling those? Yeah. Then they don't match up with the, the fruit of the spirit. He's not Find saying going on. that the thought, yeah. just having the thought is sin. He's saying, catch it, make hold it captive and place it with my word. Mm -hmm. And that will destroy it. Well, Captivate it. I mean, hold it captive and destroy it with the sword. Yeah, which is the word. Which is the word. That's what he told you. He he gives you the sword. You know, we can do everything and be okay with the helmet of helmet of salvation. Yeah, we're fine. You know, oh, I'm gonna repent. I'm gonna repent. <laughs> right. I'm gonna repent and I'm gonna be okay because yeah. I'm gonna make it to heaven. You can have this this helmet of salvation, but he gives you the rest of it for a reason. Amen. Because God, he girl. knows there's things that you need to deal with. Yes. That you have to tear down. Yes. That you have to come out yes. with the sword. That you have to do it. We He can't do that for us. No. He gave us all the instructions, all the directions. How do we tear it down? We have to look at the truth about ourselves. Yes. And once Isaiah was able to look at the truth about himself. Mm -hmm. Once on. Isaiah was able to say, I am unclean. Once right. Isaiah was able to say, and the men that serve with me are unclean. Because he had Uzziah in such a high place. Once he was able to say those things, God's like, mm -hmm. sending you out. Mm -hmm. Go. Yeah. You want to go? Go. And I'll be with you the whole way mm -hmm. through. Mm-hmm. And I will make you a strong, mighty tree yeah. of righteousness. How mm -hmm. awesome is that? That we serve a God that will take what we were and turn Come us on. into righteousness. Yeah. Right standing with right. him. He Amen. will make us brand new Look at the disciples. People. Oh, my God. Wow. The disciples. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he made them all brand new. Different. They weren't <sighs> even the same men. No. They were all different. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody's persecuting all the Christians. Oh, but that's okay because now you're brand new. Yeah, you've got this. That's craziness. Yeah. To me, that's like, how could we not think that God cannot do anything yeah. with us? Yeah, as I was as I was studying this, and like I said, I've been doing this for, well, studying for a while, but I, I look at this and I think to my life and I see all the suffering that I've gone through in my life and I have can honestly say, if I'm being transparent, I need a sign that says transparency, transparency alert. Yeah. Trey, I've not, I've not <laughs> suffered for the Lord. Oh man. No, of course not. My suffering are my mistakes mm -hmm. and my hidden high places right. that I refuse to deal with. Mm -hmm. He's getting us ready to suffer for him. But I mean, Many of us say, you know, Lord, why are you taking me through this? He's like, I, I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't take mm -hmm. you through this. Surely didn't. Um, I mean, 25 years I took myself through tor torment. Yeah. And he's and this night. close. Yeah. And all he was saying was. Touch. Grab my. Yeah. All he was saying was just, you didn't even have to. I didn't even have to touch much of it. No. He's at the end. The, the end. end of it. Just the very end of it. It just shredded to nothing. Yeah. To like a little small sliver of fabric it still would have been enough for jesus yes, look at that that's it it still would have been enough for jesus that's awesome and he heals us and he sets us straight 
and he teaches us to walk on his path. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's crazy mm -hmm. how the Lord works. No, you know? He's amazing. And uh, like I said, you know, God is always faithful. And, what, you know, coming out of what I'm coming out of, I'm like, oh, my God, how could I just, I, I mean, oh, my God. Like, you just, the clarity of who God is right. now. The goodness, the faithfulness, and and he takes us back to who we are. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't do it like when I say that I'm but dust, or and Isaiah said I'm unclean. Clean, right. It's not like we're saying it out of a, a, a we're horrible, awful mm -hmm. people. We're saying you're just so awesome. Mm -hmm. You're so awesome for showing me what I am not. Yeah. And that if I get close to you, I, I can partake in that. Yeah, yeah. It's even like a... Like you, it's like a woof. Thank yeah. you. I don't have to hold that. Mm -hmm. You hold me. Yeah. You're so amazing. Yes, yeah. that's a great. You know, thing. we we know that God is always in control of everything. And those that are watching, I really believe that the Lord is just trying to bring some restoration to your lives. That's the only reason we want to be so transparent about everything. And yes. You know, You'll see as we continue on these Fridays that there's going to be a lot more transparency because I believe that the body of Christ needs to see that transparency because a lot of us are hiding. Yeah. A lot of us are hiding and we're not allowing God to come tear down our, our, the uh, power that we will. Yeah. The power that God can. And we're not allowing the Lord to come in and tear down these walls and, you know, these things in our lives because we want to keep them because we're comfortable with them. And I can speak for myself. No, yeah. I was comfortable with feeling what I felt for all those years because I was used to it mm -hmm. and it was hidden and I kept it. And I said, you know, God, it's it's something that I'm just I can just keep going on. I'm accustomed to it. Right. You Sometimes you even forget. Yeah, because you're used to it. Yeah. And it's like... Like you're in a cave. Yeah. Wow. Uh, hello. And so... You're sick. Yeah. And and it's like, I, I did I see. did all the right things, but I still was holding that. Yeah. And in reality, I really wasn't doing all the right things because if I was doing <laughs> the right things... You would have told... Yeah. I would have said, look, this is what I'm dealing with and I, 20 something years ago. Oh my God. But God knows. But God knows. And I do believe that everything that we go through is for for somebody else to see that they can come in on right. the other side of whatever they're dealing with. Yeah. So I just want all of those people that are watching to know whatever you're dealing with, there's always the other side of what you're dealing yes. with. Yes. And it's the goodness of God, the faithfulness of who God is. And, you know, God is so faithful. Yes. Uh my cousin Richard says he's watching from Houston, big Houston, Texas. Oh, hello, Richard. You know, I love Texas. Yeah. Born and bred Texas here. But uh, we're in Ohio and it's very yeah. cold over here. I don't very. know the temp right now, but I, I heard Texas is going to get some cold weather too. So, mm. which I'm so surprised. Yeah. Take me, take me to leave Texas yeah. for it to get, get cold. But you know, God is so good. And I know that God is faithful to his word and everything that came forth today, we're, Tonight, we know that God is going to honor it yes. because you're going to get some healing from it because the Lord is not going to let us say something that he that's not going to come no. back to him void. No, the word of God is the truth and the word of God is what brings healing and restoration. The word of God is what you need. Whatever you're dealing with is what you need. Not Pastor Vicky, not Pastor Esther, not Pastor nobody. It's the word of God. It's Jesus. That's what brings the healing. That's what brings the transformation. That's what brings your deliverance. That br brings whatever you need. Amen. Not us. No. Not us. No, Paul. we're like Paul. No, no, we are just but men but and men. women yes. of God. But we just want to share what we've learned yeah. and the process that we've gone through in our lives. And that's the only reason we're here. Yeah. For any other reason than that. It is not it's, for glory. It is not, not yeah. for anything. And, you know, next week we're going to talk about Ahaz. That's chapter 28. <laughs> but he was a very horrific king. Mm -hmm. He did horrific things. He was just awful. I mean, he sacrificed his own children. 
on the altar. And these are God's kings. Um, and you'll just mm-hmm. see how God turned him around and, and made every crooked way straight. straight yeah. And um, it's, it's be a beautiful good. thing. It's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, it's good because we all need straightened out. Jesus. And if he, he's just good. He's a good, Amen. good God. So it doesn't matter what our backgrounds are. God will use us and he will make us right and and with the highs, he'll use what you said in Leviticus. He'll make him tear down those amen, strongholds. Amen. So, so we encourage you, if you're in the uh, Defiance or in the Ohio area, to come check out Pastors Pete and uh, Pete and Esther Flores there in Defiance. What's the address? 600 Division. Uh, don't mind the address. 600 Division <laughs> Street. But it's dividing. I used to think, oh, we shouldn't buy this church because, well, God, thank God, gets all the glory. Huh. Uh, amen. I mean it. He's humbled me. But, um... It gets all the glory, but division, I was so worried about that, even like Jotham, what are the people going to say? But God's like dividing flesh from, from the, yeah, yeah, the, the carnality from the word. Yep. It's and good. we must divide it in order to go forward. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. But we we encourage you to come. Definitely. Come and see us. I say us because we go to church. There. Amen. These are our pastors and yeah. we love them. And, yeah. you know, we want you to come out and they do have children's church for yes. those that want to know. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have service at 10. Yep. And Wednesdays at 6. <laughs> Wednesdays at 6. We have Bible yes. study. Bible so study. It, it's been really good. We're, we're doing a book and I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've read chapter five and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, did the guy write the book for me? For me. For me. I'm like, he knows but me personally. He knows me. We're friends. He knows my heart's deceitful. <laughs> yeah. God, Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. But we encourage you to come out. <laughs> like I said, if you're, excuse me, if you're in the Ohio area, and just come out and see what God has for you. You know, I, I know that the word is the truth and it's the foundation of everything. You can't build anything unless no. you have a good foundation. Amen. And, you know, we're just so grateful that they've been a part of our lives and so grateful for the season God has us in as as people of God, as ministers of the gospel, because sometimes you just need that place, that safety where you can be transparent and know that Amen. God's gonna do a good thing from it. Amen. So like we 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 recommend that you come out to New Jerusalem Church yes. and see what come God see has us. for you. Yeah. Um, thank you all for watching tonight. We really appreciate everybody that was on and we ask that you like and share it. If you didn't get to watch it all, you know, come back and watch it later because I really believe that this, this is going to help you. And, you know, if you have any prayer requests, inbox us and we'll get them yes, to you. Amen. Know, we'll pray for you guys and whatever you need. So we love you guys. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. I'm Pastor Vicki and Pastor Esther. And we just appreciate you being on the air with us tonight. And we love you guys. God bless you. All right. God bless. Bye. Bye. <laughs>